Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. I can't believe it guys, but it is almost time for this cast to come off. It is week four after the second side. I did this side about a year ago and yeah, I know it, the camera sort of flips it around, but this is my right. So I did the right one about a month ago and it is the CMC joint suspension plasty and tendon transfer. And as I said the last time when I did a video on this, which is a couple weeks ago, it, that, that one of the hardships, of course, being the dominant hand, it's a little hard for me to video work with the computer or anything else. Uh, although it's about as easy as they could have made it for me, but it's, you know, of course I, I'm looking forward to getting my dominant hand back. But as I said back then, things were going better on this side, surprisingly, than they had when I did the left. And that's very surprising if you're right-handed, um, but it continues to be so. Now, I did have a little blip during my post-op course, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but overall, things have gone um, tremendously well, but just so much better than with the previous side for a few reasons. So I'm going to take the cast cover off here because I want to talk about some aspects of this cast. Anyway, the cast is coming off on in two more days, not even, yeah, 48 hours from now, this will be off, and I will be fitted into a... Um, custom splint by the occupational therapist that works in my surgeon's office and I assume I'll be able to take that off for some periods of time to do certain things and I can't wait to get it into the pool and move it around in the water. Uh, I'm kind of a fish at heart. I practically have gills so I love to live in the water and um, I found that the last time once I could sort of move the hand through water um, it really started to get better and better very quickly and I find that the water exercise anyway is really good for the arthritis. I have arthritis elsewhere. Most people don't only have arthritis in one or two joints. So I found that, that moving my joints through their full range of motion with the weight off the joint has always been really helpful. And so I have uh, been a big fan for many years in, of water exercises. And I don't mean just your grandmother's water aerobics or swimming laps. I mean different kinds of water exercise drills. So I can't wait to start doing that with this hand because one nice thing about the water is however hard you push it, that's how hard it pushes back. So it's like a custom designed weight rack where you have infinite settings. You don't have to go from three pounds to five pounds to seven pound dumbbells. Um, so however hard, if you just, you know, bring the hand gently through the water, the water's only pushing back gently against it. And if you push really hard or you put on some of those, those fins I'm sure people have seen, or the, they're like kind of a webbed glove for the hand, creates more water resistance. And if you do that really fast, then you get a lot more resistance back from the water. So yeah, suffice it to say, I can't wait to get back into the water. So this continues to be doing better than I did the last time and far exceeded my expectations. I think a big part of it is this cast. Somebody had mentioned in the previous video that I did that, you know, it's nice cast and it looks better than last time and it sure does. For one thing, it's very short. So there's my elbow. It's only, it's, you know, maybe a little more than halfway to my elbow. Um, for another thing, I, I heard him explain to his MA that um, the surgeon, when I saw him and she put the cast on to, you know, make it nice and loose and make it down low, below this knuckle line of the fingers. And not only has that allowed me to do some things, of course, it's hard to type because this is banging down on the keyboard, but I, I can do some things. I can't really grip because it, it's designed so that my thumb, you know, I can use this PIP joint right here, um, but I, I, the CMC and really the MP joint are uh, pretty much immobilized. So I can't really make the thumb as much as I can touch to this finger. I can't make it grip things, but I can uh, use the fingers for some things and even hold some things between two fingers uh, in, in place of having had a thumb there. Uh, the other thing that this is allowed for is just to keep the fingers moving a whole lot when this row of knuckles is free. And so I'm going to be starting out now when this cast comes off way ahead of where I was, because I remember that when I started occupational therapy the last time, the fingers were so stiff that uh, I, I could barely get the thumb to touch the index finger. Well, I can do that here already just because of the way this cast is constructed. Um, the other thing about the cast is that it is loose enough in here that I can give a little massage to the joint because if I get any soreness, it's right about there. And that's not moving anything that I shouldn't be moving, but I can I can get in there and I can give it a little bit of a rub and that really does help a lot. Same thing with right here. I had trouble last time with the this the long bone of the index finger getting sort of sore from being immobilized. I had a little of that this time, really minimal compared to before, but I can get in there a little bit and do that. Um, now, yeah, it's still a cast. It's still kind of gross. Yeah, I can't wait to get this thing off and like take, you know, a real shower without like a plastic cast cover over me and just really get in there and, you know, clean everything. 
So I'm not really looking forward to seeing what my arm looks like up under here because if I remember correctly, there was all kinds of like dead skin that sort of collected in there. I'm not looking forward to that, but I am looking forward to having this off. So hopefully the next time I bring you guys a video, I'll show you my custom splint. I, I can't recommend enough to just do your due diligence and shop and shop and shop for a surgeon and cross-reference them, get a second opinion, a third opinion, because really there's not a lot of different ways to do this surgery, but there are some nuanced differences. And when I got my second opinion um, that he didn't, the second surgeon who I ended up using did not agree with the first surgeon on whether to do a fusion. In my case, I'm very happy I didn't do the thumb fusion. Um, I, I just really like that the philosophy of the surgeon that I'm with now is that, you know, he wants things moving. Like I said, just the way the cast is constructed. Uh, this is on for, this will have been on for three weeks. So I had a week where I had that big bulky dressing. And then after that, they put it in the cast. So all these things like the early movement and being able to move everything, but what's not supposed to move has really been tremendously helpful for me, not only to be comfortable during the post-op course, not perfect, but as comfortable, really much better than I thought it far exceeded my expectations, but I think it's really going to help me get a leg up and start getting better very quickly after this thing comes off. I will let you know. Now, I also have a lot of the OT equipment that I used last time. I, I saved it last time because um, it was also during pandemic. I bought a lot of those products that they use in the OT um, therapy so that I could not only continue doing it at home, but I did some of my visits remotely. I'm not going to be able to do that this time, but I also thought it was just helpful to not only go two times a week, but to just be doing them a few times a day at home. I'm like, why not? So I, I will talk about some of those. And given that I'm with a different surgeon, it's going to be interesting to see if some of the equipment that I'm going to be using with the occupational therapist is different this time. I don't know about that, but I'll let you know. Um, so overall, I just really couldn't be happier. I did have a little blip, unfortunately, and I, I was debating about saying this because I don't want to scare people, um, but I did unfortunately develop a GI infection. I got C. diff, which can be a miserable, horrible, very dangerous infection. Unfortunately, it was, you know, it didn't rise to that level at all for me. Uh, they do give you a round of antibiotic before any orthopedic surgery. I certainly wouldn't want them to do anything differently. I understand why they do that. Um, and it's really unusual to get C. diff from like one course, like not even a course, but like a one dose thing, like you get preoperatively. But the reality is I worked not only in healthcare for 30 some odd years, I worked in gastroenterology for the last decade of that, uh, probably am colonized. And in my very distant past, I actually had a case of C. diff many, many years ago, 20 some odd years ago. So when it wasn't what it is now. So I guess I'm lucky that I've gotten along this far without it. I do take probiotics if I'm going to be taking an antibiotic. I do all the things I should be doing, you know, whatever, about, I don't know, I'd say eight or 10 days after surgery, some, like shortly after the cast went on, um, I, I knew I had C. diff pretty quickly. Now, the good news is there is a new medication out for C. diff. It is called Difficid, and instead of having to try and fail all the other antibiotics that they use for C. diff and usually have to use first because insurance doesn't pay for Divisid. Um, my doctor told me, go ahead and get on the Divisid like right away. Now, some people have trouble getting their insurance to pay for Divisid. I will say that I, I have heard horror stories that like the copay is $1,300 or $1,500. I think the drug, the vial of the drug itself, the bottle of 20 pills because you take it twice a day for 10 days is something like four or $5,000. So uh, I was really lucky. There is a um, section on their website, D-I-F-I-C-I-D, Deficit's website. And if you go to that uh, website, you'll find one of those savings cards and you can fill out a form and see if you qualify. I believe you don't qualify if you either have like military insurance or Medicare or something federal like that. But it will help some people. And in my case, it helped me. I think my pharmacist must have pulled one of those out and enrolled me in them because my copay was $50, which is what it says on Divisid's website. It will be if you qualify for the card. And I think you can use it up to four times. So that should be of tremendous help to some people. I would say that um, I'm in a way, I'm glad I have the hindsight of this experience that I didn't go through having the vancomycin that so many people just fail now. Um, and they just get sicker and sicker. And some people are just sick a very long time with C. diff. Um, I was so disappointed that it happened to me. And it's just such a challenging time when you've got one hand in a cast because there are hygienic implications. Unfortunately, I was able to be meticulous and everything else. But um, I will say that try to prevail upon your provider to let you go straight to deficit um, if you are so unfortunate as to have C. diff uh, because it has just a much, much better response rate. 
Um, there's also something called fecal microbiota transplant for people who fail. There's certain criteria you have to meet because it's under EUA with the FDA authorization, but um, that apparently is actually the best. And I think that when that becomes FDA approved, like fully approved, it would make sense to me that that would actually become the first line of treatment because it's safer and it's cheaper than um, some of these antibiotics like uh, Difficid. So um, I'm looking forward to the day when we have more research behind us and we can do more with the microbiome because the microbiome is actually what predisposes you to have C. diff anyway. It's not the C. diff um, infection itself. A lot of people are colonized for C. diff and it's just not a problem. Um, my guess is the stress of surgery, the antibiotics from surgery, and maybe the fact that I'm celiac. Celiacs have a slightly different gut microbiome. Maybe those things all you know, were just the perfect storm at that time. And I'm fortunate I responded very quickly to the medication. So um, yeah, definitely look into deficit and definitely before you have any kind of orthopedic surgery, I highly recommend taking a probiotic, which I did anyway, by the way. Um, Floristor is an excellent one for prevention of C. diff toxin. And BioK Plus is another one. Floristor happens to be a yeast. BioK Plus is a bacterial culture, but uh, Floristor, because it is a yeast, you don't have to worry about taking it, you know, too close or too, you know, far away from an antibiotic if you happen to be taking it because it's a yeast and an antibiotic won't kill it. So yeah, that's a little bit of a tangent. I'm glad that everything is okay. Um, but I, it's, it's kind of made for, I didn't feel well for a little while there. So it was every, just everything about life was a little bit challenging there for a couple of weeks, but fortunately I'm, I'm, back uh, together. So yeah, I'm going to look forward to two more days from now when I go in and have this thing cut off and get my splint. I will get back with you guys about what I'm doing, what that first occupational therapy visit was like. Um, yeah, so the take home, please shop and do your due diligence on surgeons. Uh, I would have a propensity towards somebody who immobilizes for less time, somebody who's a big proponent of ice. That was another difference between my current surgeon and my previous surgeon who was not a big proponent of ice in the immediate post-op period. Well, ice made all the difference in the world for me. Ice is an excellent anti-inflammatory. And you know, this time around, I, I really didn't have much pain after one, I was about 24 hours after the block wore off, I was taking the narcotic and the next day I didn't take it at all. So I took the narcotic for all of one day. Um, with this surgery, which I think is pretty phenomenal. And I think that has to do with the aggressive icing. Um, so yeah, due diligence, early mobilization, somebody who will pay close attention to the cast. Okay. My surgeon said to me, I don't ever have anybody walk out of here with a cast on that I don't check. Lots and lots of surgeons have their MAs do casts. And I know the MAs who do them regularly are you know, perfectly qualified to do them, but there's something about the surgeon checking that and asking you if it's okay and how's this and how's that. And it just, it alleviates a lot of concerns about the casting because immobilization is a little bit hard to deal with. Um, hopefully nobody else out there is <laughs> listening to this is going to get C. diff, but if you do, or if you get C. diff from some other situation where you're on a course of antibiotics, which would be more likely, um, deficit, try to get deficit. Um, yeah. And so I'll, I'll talk to you guys next time. And until then, be well. Bye-bye.